Hello, welcome to Prigime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 30 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about uploading files to the server using the ASP.NET file upload control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 19 and 20 of this video series. Let's drag and drop the file upload control onto the web form. Now remember, a file upload control can only be used to select a file that they want to upload. This control will not actually upload the file. To upload the file, let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form. And let's give this button a meaningful name. Let's call this upload file. And let's give this button an ID, btn upload. Okay. To display the status of the upload, let's drag and drop a label control. Let's flip to the source. Let's give this a meaningful ID, LBL message. Let's get rid of the text property. And let's set the font bold is equal to true. Okay, so we have all the infrastructure in place to upload the file. So when I click this upload file button, that's when the file should actually be uploaded to the server. Okay, so if we run the application as it stands right now, you know, I am, I will be able to select the file that I want to upload. You know, I am able to select the file. Let's say I want to upload this test analyst.doc, but then look at this. Upon selection, this will never get saved to the server. To upload that to the server, you know, you have to click this button and then we have to write the code to basically do that. Okay, but then before we do that, we also need to have several validations in place. For example, let's say I want to allow only Word documents to be uploaded onto the server. And if the user doesn't type or select anything here, and then if he tries to upload this file, then I should get a validation message saying that you haven't selected a file to upload. And along the same lines, if you have selected a file, I don't want to, you know, I don't want the user to upload a file greater than 2 MB. And this is very important to keep in mind because these days, this denial of service attacks are, you know, happening very frequently. So to avoid them, it's better you put a restriction on the size of the file that they can upload. Okay, so along those lines, let's say I just want to allow the user to upload only a file that has got 2 MB. We'll see how to do all that in a bit. Okay, now to upload the file, it's actually very simple. I have this file upload control. It has got a save as method. All you have to do is tell the path of the server where you want to save this file. Okay, now let's say in my ASP.NET Web Application project, I am going to have a folder called uploads. Okay, so all uploads that the user does should be going into this folder. Okay, so now look at this. This web application project can be deployed on any server and the physical directory can be anything and the virtual directory in the IIS can be different thing. Now, irrespective of whatever is the physical directory where this project is present, you know, I want all the uploads to be going into this folder. So for that reason, it's not a good practice to actually hard code the path here like C colon backslash, whatever, you know, it's, it's never a good practice. That's why in part in parts 19 and 20 of this video series, we have actually discussed about what's uh, a virtual path and what's a physical path is and how to map between virtual path and physical path using the server.mappPath method. Okay, if you're new to that, please watch these video sessions before continuing with this session. Okay, so I'm going to use that and then I'm going to say server.mappPath and then to this one, I'm going to tell, you know, tilde. Tilde is basically the root directory of this web application project. So within the root directory of this web application project, find this uploads folder. So uploads folder. And within that, we want to save the file. Okay. Now I want to retain the name of the file that the client has used. Okay. So how do I get the client file's name? Using the file upload controls, there is a property called file name, which gives you that. That's all, we are done, okay? And then probably in the label control, I want to display the message that the file is uploaded. So lbl.message.text is equal to file uploaded. And then maybe I want to bold the, you know, I want to change the color of the label to green. So system.drawing.bold. 
dot color dot green that's it so when we run this now okay there's an expected closing parenthesis let's run this now so now I should be able to upload a file onto the server so I go there I select a file let's say I want to select you know the log.txt and I upload look at that file uploaded and then if we go and open this folder in Windows Explorer you should see that log.txt there very good okay so the file got uploaded now the first restriction if the user doesn't select look at that if I don't select a file and then if I click on upload file look at that could not find part of path you know I am basically getting an exception there okay so we need to have validation in place we need to make sure that the user has a file selector before he tries to upload that how do we do that it's very simple if file upload one dot there is a boolean property called a has file and if you look at that it's going to return a true or false if the file upload has file then only upload else display a message to the user lbl message dot text please select a file to upload okay and then maybe we want to change the color to red so system dot drawing dot color dot red so now if we run this and try to you know upload a file without selecting a file then we get a message because this property returns false so please select a file to upload and if I select a file and then try to upload that gets uploaded fine okay so another restriction is I want to allow only word documents you know the files which has got the dot doc or dot docx extension so how do I do that okay so if the file if the upload controller has got the file then what we want to do is we want to check the extension so string file extension so the next question is how do we get the file extension now anything that you want to do with files is actually present in a namespace called system.io so you can either use the using statement on the top or you can use the fully qualified name here so system.io there is a class called path and within that class there is a static method called get extension and then if you give a full path to this method it's going to return you the extension of that file name within that path so how do I get the file name here you can use the file upload control dot file name okay so you have the extension here now if if the file extension now it's a good practice to actually convert it to a lower case and then compare it because if the users has named their extension with a mix of upper and lower case you want that to get right so convert all of them to lower so if the file extension dot to lawyer not equal to dot doc and if it's not equal to dot docx extension if it's not any of these then we know we have a problem so we will just output a message saying that only files with dot doc or dot docx extension are allowed okay else upload the file so if it's one of those only then perform this upload okay but then another restriction that we want okay so I'm okay if it's word document but again word document need to have a limitation I only want to allow the files which is which are less than uh, 2 MB so the maximum size they can upload is 2 MB okay so how do I check the size okay so we know that the user has got the file and the extension is word document okay but then before they upload again I want to check the size so how do I get the size let's say int file size 
is equal to so now we need to get the file size now to get the file size actually we have you know the file upload control dot uploaded file within the uploaded there's a property called posted file which has got a property called content length okay and if you look at the IntelliSense here this gets the size of an uploaded file and that too in bytes okay but we want to calculate that in megabytes okay and we know that you know 1024 bytes is 1 kilobyte and 1024 kilobytes is 1 megabyte so if we want to get the total bytes 1024 multiplied by 1024 that's 1 megabyte and that multiplied by 2 is 2 megabytes 2097152 okay so here we have the file size f the file size is greater than 2097152 then we know that the file size is greater than 2 MB in which case we don't want to do the upload but we'll just display a message stating that only files you know of size 2 MB or lower are allowed maximum file size exceeded and maybe maximum file size 2 MB we want to specify that there maximum file size 2 MB exceeded okay so let's see if this works as expected so let's run this now so we have all the validations in place at the moment okay first of all let's try to upload you know an executable here I selected an executable and that's dangerous let's try to upload that look at that only files with .doc or .doc extension are allowed so that validation is kicking in if I don't select a file at all and try to upload please select a file to upload on the other hand let's say I select a word document but then I have a file here which is called large file and if you look at that that's actually in C drive so if you look at that in C drive this large file if you look at the size it's 2.57 MB 2634 KB slightly greater than 2 MB let's try to upload that and see what's gonna happen so I select that upload file look at that maximum file size 2 MB exceeded if you want you can also compute uh, you can output that message saying that your file size is whatever because we are able to calculate their file size there you can print that to the user as well if you want to but on the other hand if I select a word document which is less than 2 MB here I have this test and list and if you look at that one before we upload that test and list is only 1 out 5 KB well below 2 MB so I should be able to upload that without any problem so upload so file uploaded successfully now let's go to the web application project open this folder in Windows Explorer we should see the test and list there okay so it's very simple to actually upload files using this file upload control within ASP.NET and the important properties here are a has file property which returns a true or false indicating that whether this file upload control has a file to upload or not and to get the file extension use the get extension method of system.io.path and then the other important property is the posted file and then the content length which gives you the total length of the uploaded file On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.